If you focus stack your images and you use Adobe Lightroom Classic like I do, I have a very cool, very useful plugin that is absolutely free. Uh, it's not going to cost you a thing. Uh, something that I think you will definitely be interested in. And let's jump into Lightroom Classic here and uh, check it out. So whenever you create a focus stacked image, you inevitably end up with a bunch of images, right? I bet for some of you, this will absolutely look familiar. You end up with a bunch of images in your catalog and you can't tell one from another. And in focus stacking, you need to know you know, where your sequence started and where it stopped. And sometimes you can tell that from, you know, the timestamps on the images, you know, or you do something like this. This is, you know, generally what I do. I'll just punch into the images and I'll compare one to another, zoom in on a particular area. And I can tell from comparing these images here that this image on the right was focused much closer to the camera in the foreground, while this one on the left was focused from, you know, much further away because the foreground is much blurrier. And that is what it means to create a focus stacked image. All you're really doing is just a simple technique where you are uh, focusing on multiple points within your scene and you're capturing one image of each. You basically, well, what I typically do is I just start with the immediate foreground. I get as close to the camera as I possibly can, take an image, and then just slowly push my focal point out like two, two or three feet, something like that, take another one, and then just keep doing that. And yes, some cameras can obviously do that for you automatically. I guess I'm somewhat old school. I just do it manually. It's just something I'm in the habit of doing. I should probably learn how to really take advantage of the automatic way of doing it, but... Anyway, that is what it means to create a focus stacked image. And the net result, when you take all of those separate images and you blend them all together in Photoshop, you end up with a perfectly sharp image from the foreground to the background. And I know some people, especially in landscape photography circles, they get a little crazy about sharpness, like they, they get a little obsessive about it. Me personally, I really don't worry about it that much. But the only time in which I do worry about it and when I focus stack an image is when I have a, a scene like this, where I have a subject, which to me is just as important, uh, you know, out here in the distance as it is here close to the camera. I want the viewer to see all of the subject. I want them to see, you know, the detail and the texture that's here in the immediate foreground. And I want them to see all the detail and texture all the way back into the back of the frame. And so from a compositional perspective, I felt for this particular shot, a focus stacked image was important. But quite honestly, most of the time, uh, I don't use focus stacking that much because I just find it to be somewhat laborious. I mean, it takes a while to create all those individual frames. And quite honestly, I don't think every image just really needs it or benefits from it. Okay, so uh, this plugin uh, helps uh, you figure out which images are which by doing the following. So I'm gonna select a bunch of images here. You don't have to select multiple. You can just select one if you want to. Come up here to the file menu, go to plugin extras, and with the plugin installed, you select show focus point. And check that out. In the very first image here, the one we just saw a minute ago, that little red box there is showing me exactly where my camera focused when this image was originally created. Awesome. Right? Like I don't have to punch into the image and try to figure it out myself. It is showing me using actual data, like real data from the EXIF metadata, which is baked into the image file by the camera. It is showing me exactly the XY coordinate of where the camera focused. And then because I open multiple images, I have some arrows down here and I can click over to next image and then it'll show me, yep, I focused here next. And then the next one, yep, over there a few feet further away and then so on and so forth. And I'm probably gonna do that next. And then let me guess, the next one is going to reset and go back. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I, I know myself pretty well. So yeah, just from doing that, I can tell that uh, this image, uh, which is image number five in the sequence of images that I opened here, image number one through five are a set. They are a sequence of focus stacked images which I can then stack together. And let me just exit out here. So that's deselect everything. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Go to stacking and then group into stack. And so now I know that these are, that this is a complete set of images. And here's an extra little tip for you, by the way. If you create stacks for other things too, like 
panos or HDR images or uh, maybe both. Uh, if you're a crazy person, uh, just right click on the uh, stack here. And by the way, I say crazy person in a, in a positive way because uh, I definitely have, uh, I've done some crazy things too. I've like focus stacked, HDR, pano, like, you know, like 36 images or something. Yeah, it gets out of hand. Anyway, then you can assign a color label to your stack. And I actually have one set up specifically for focus stack. So when I see that color, when I see this kind of bluish purple color, I know that that is a focus stacked uh, sequence when I'm browsing through my Lightroom catalog. And that is something you can control, by the way, by coming up here to metadata and you go to color label set and then select edit. And here you are able to create uh, different sets of labels for, you know, the different things that, you know, you may be doing in Lightroom and you're able to save these things as presets. So you're able to switch, you know, between each one depending on what it is that you're doing. And so this is just a nice convenient way to be adding some, you know, some labeling, some, you know, visual cues. So you know exactly what a stack is just based purely off of its color. Now this plugin may be used with other file types besides raw. Uh, for example, you can use it with a JPEG image. All this required is valid metadata. As long as your digital camera is saving EXIF metadata containing focal point information to the image file, it doesn't matter you know, what kind of image file it is. So for example, this image here, this is a you know, JPEG that was shot with a Fujifilm camera long ago, back, <laughs> back before I turned, uh, back before I started turning gray and, uh, and my kids were definitely smaller. I was, um, God, this was, uh, this was actually at an Airbnb in Barcelona a long time ago. And I was nursing, um, nursing some pretty severe jet lag from what I remember at the time. Anyway, what I want to show you here is that, you know, yes, here's that red focal point, right? So that is where the camera focused at the time, but you can see this yellow box here too, right? On my daughter's face here. And the yellow box is showing me where uh, where the face detection system kicked in. It's showing me where the camera detected a face in my scene compared to the place where the camera actually focused. Now there are a variety of reasons why this can, you know, uh, why this can happen, different levels of, you know, prioritization, or maybe it was a uh, like a manual override when taking the image, who knows what. All it's doing, it's just showing you where the, uh, where the camera thought the subject was, where it detected a face, and it'll highlight that and show you where the actual focal point was as well. So, you know, if uh, doing like portrait photography or taking images of people is something you frequently do, it's not something quite honestly I do all that often, but if that is uh, something you do, or maybe even pets, animals, that kind of stuff, uh, that information can also come through here in the plugin. That said, everyone, if this video was helpful, please do me a favor, give it a thumbs up down below. I'd appreciate it. And of course, I'll put a link down below in the video description where you could head over to GitHub and download this plugin from there. And you'll also find installation instructions there to install it and get it up and running. And uh, that's it. Thanks, everyone. I will see you next time.